It's been a few years and a few beers since Trevor last caught up with one of Mark Skip Golden's trucks. 13 years in fact since we tested the new 430 horsepower Golden Fuso Shogun fitted with an 18 speed Road Ranger. Compared to what we're driving today, Fuso has certainly come a long way as we head into the new breed of the makes heavy duty truck being launched in NZ. Today's truck, as is obvious from its camouflage paint, is an evaluation truck brought into New Zealand to trial its new technology before launch. This new model is another example of the spread of the European influence into the Japanese market. In this case, we see world products like the Daimler 10.7 litre OM470 DD11 engine and the G330 12 speed AMT found in top end Mercedes Benz products. Trevor takes the wheel in Wellsford to head south on SH16 with a full load of aggregate. There's no hiding from tough roads on this test as Skip has already taken the unit fully loaded both ways over the Matakana Hill. Climbing up into the cab's a breeze. The combination of three well-spaced, wide and deep steps and full-length grab handles up both sides of the door make it easy. Once inside, it's also easy to get comfortable with good adjustment on the driver's seat and the steering column and plenty of legroom. There's a new Daimler air suspended seat with integrated seat belt and improved cushioning. It's certainly comfortable, but we find the back a little flat. Maybe it could do with a little more lumbar support, but it certainly contributes to a nice smooth ride over some of the harsher corrugations we encounter. The cream colored roof lining and light gray dash and center console make the cab light and airy. There are easy clean finishes on the trim, which are easy to keep clean even when working in a dusty tipper environment. All controls are closely positioned around the driver with no need to reach for anything. There's an extensive array of controls on the steering wheel, including cruise, stereo, dash display and phone. On the left hand column stalk you have the AMT selector functions, with drive, neutral and reverse on a rotator switch, and on the end a push button to select auto or manual mode. By tapping this lightly it brings up performance mode. In addition, the engine brake is controlled by pushing the lever forward. On the right are the indicators and wiper functions. As we lift off, the engine feels lively and we pick up gears very smoothly with nice quick shifts. Visibility is great out front and two well-placed mirror arms have an upper flat mirror and lower convex mirror. The arms are set back a bit which allows good vision between them and the A-pillar, avoiding any blind spot in the front right corner. It's not long before we encounter some pretty rough road surfaces and we go over these with minimal bounce in the cab and no noticeable effect on the steering which is nice, light and positive. Very similar to what we find in modern European trucks, obviously a benefit of its Daimler DNA. This truck is packed with features, one of which is active attention assist. It senses on the top of the dash in front of the driver, however, we do wonder if it's effective here as it's supposed to monitor the driver's eye action, triggering an alert if it detects signs of fatigue. But from Trevor's driving position, he can't see the unit, so there's doubt it can actually see his eyes. We'd imagine it'd be better positioned above the windscreen closer to the driver's eye line. There's also the lane departure warning system, which gives an audible warning on the side of the cab where a lane marking is crossed. This comes into play a couple of times on this narrow winding road, but we don't find it too obtrusive, and it gives a good reminder of road position. Also fitted is proximity control assist, however there's not much chance to really see that at work on SH16 as there's not too much traffic out here. Also in the package is active brake assist 4 to avoid or reduce the severity of rear end collisions with vehicles ahead or even laterally moving pedestrians, but once again there's no call for it on our drive. Of more use on this road is the EBS and ECS stability control which minimise the risk of rollover or loss of control and optimise braking, though we don't push it hard enough to see it in action today. We're soon into some serious climbing up to the Kuiper Harbour lookout and we really see just how good this shift pilot AMT works. Every change it makes is quick and clean and drops the engine right into the power band. Trevor's running in auto without the power option engaged and the engine is shifting down at 1300 RPM and up shifting at 1800. We drop down as low as fifth gear on two occasions on the climb but in both cases as soon as there's a slight easing in the climb it picks up a couple of gears, getting back up to eighth at one stage and seventh at another. The upshifting doesn't put the engine under any pressure but it's doubtful that you would dare try these shifts in a manual. Once over the top it's a long drop down the other side, but we start our descent in 8th gear, soon dropping to 7th with the retarder in its higher setting, stage 2. Trev only needing a slight touch of the brakes a couple of times to steady it for some of the tighter corners. 
It's soon time for us to give Skip his truck back for the final leg back to Silverdale through Kokapa Kappa. This truck, a prototype, but very close to the actual launch truck, is a giant leap forward for the Fuso Heavy product in New Zealand and an outstanding example of what is now being delivered through the global associations of the major European brands with other world markets. This might be a Japanese-produced truck, but it's got the Daimler DNA, offering features that are right up to date with the most advanced technologies. It's hard to see drivers wanting to get out of this new generation Fuso HDT Euro 6 once they've driven it.